Hello YouTube. I just want to go over a few things with you and uh, let you guys know that I'm going to be doing a full study on the serpent seed doctrine that uh, Jonathan Clack is pushing. And I'm going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's false and he's twisting the scriptures. I'm also going to prove to you really quick here that he's lying. I mean deliberately lying and he's trying to hide information. Okay, now I'll put a little message up that'll tell you if you you know if you want to pass the drama, go past the drama and just get straight to the teaching. I'll put a little uh, box up to tell you how to do that in a minute. But um, these are three separate site uh, private messages that Jonathan sent me. Um, the first one he says, I'm sorry, but your hostility as well as your erroneous position is nothing short of the Pharisees. I understand that he's calling me, you know, uh, one of the brood of vipers. Okay, that's, that's pretty strong. Okay? He says, I have blocked you, but you might want to come and listen to the radio program this weekend. Peace and grace. And uh, I just basically responded and said, hey, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, you, sometimes, you know, you just can't, you can't be totally polite. But I didn't say anything that's uh, beyond anything that he himself has said. And I'll prove that in just a second. Um, next comment was, feel free to make as many videos as you like debasing me as you wish. Unfortunately, you do not have eyes to see or ears to hear. I'm sorry, Kev, but I have removed your comments due to their hostile and brutish demeanor. Again, I'm going to prove that that's not true because I have the comments. Okay? Uh, there again, though, you, you know, I'm going to put them up here on the screen briefly. Uh, and you guys have to pause the video to read them if you're interested to see if he's lying or not. I believe he is. Of course, you have your own opinion. I don't think you're going to see anything there that you haven't heard him himself said, say. Okay? Uh, the next comment I thought was a little weird. Um, he says, question, why would you have a PayPal link on your channel? And I was, like, puzzled. I mean, like, why would he care? But, uh, you know, my reply to that was, you should know the answer to this. As like you, some people have asked if they can donate to our ministry, since I'm a missionary in the Philippines, the best way for us to be able to receive generous contributions is PayPal. That said, I have heard you ask for support, thus you should, thus should you be allowed to receive support but we can't I'm really 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 concerned about you Jonathan as you seem to be losing it a bit as you routinely speak of truth but work hard to hide same what gives okay <clears throat> now getting back to his latest video and this is basically just a rehash of the stuff he's been saying for the last several years um, it's entitled Antichrist, the Serpent, and the Father of Lies. Now, one thing that I'm starting to notice about false teachers is they always talk about truth, 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 truth. Okay, it's, it, it's you know, I'm not saying everybody that talks about truth is a liar. But I'm just saying they, they do it, and they do it an awful lot. <clears throat> you know, Pastor Dow, the black Hebrew Israelite cult, straightway truth cult. Is the, it, it's the same thing. He's always talking about truth, 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 truth. I've proven this guy lying so many times, I can't even begin to tell you. But I'm going to prove it here again. Now, I'm not going to play uh, John, this por portion of the video, but I'm just going to show you and tell you exactly where it is. If you go to 1 hour, 26 minutes, and 5 seconds, and start listening there, right about here, He's talking about weakness of will, and he mentions lying and all that, okay, which he's doing himself, okay? Um, and you, again, if you go from one hour, 26 minutes, five seconds, and you listen to one hour, 
28 minutes and 14 seconds it approved my point because the only thing that I can think of that I could that I said that would be even remotely considered hostile as I was talking about a belief in something or a statement or an interpretation of what scripture said and I said that's just insane or that's insanity yet in this very video Jonathan mentions the same terms several times and I'm not going to go through and you know tell you every little part uh, probably the most of the people that are watching this have already heard it and he says it routinely that's insane that's insane you know that's insanity that's just you know something that uh, people say and that's not rude and that's not brutish that's just the facts as we see them okay so beyond that getting uh, into the next phase of this video um, this is from Welcome to Let Us Reason. These guys are very, very, very respected uh, biblical teachers. They've been around for years and years and years. And uh, they have done a very, 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 very extensive uh, study on the serpent seed doctrine and Cain and the bloodlines and blah, blah, blah. So I'll tell you right now, this video uh, is probably going to be at least three four maybe even more parts to this you know Jonathan says hey feel free to make all the videos I want well you know what Mr. Cleck that's exactly what I'm gonna do because my job is a watchman on the wall to make sure the truth's being told and you're not telling all the truth and I'm not saying you're all bad bro okay I've been polite to you I've supported you I've backed you up I've fought for you and uh, you turn around and throw me to the wolves, man. I mean, you know, and not only that, but it's it's on fiction. It, you know, and all you're trying to do is cover your false teaching. So I'm going to do my very best to expose you. Some of your people, cronies, they're not going to listen. That may offend some of you. But you know what? You're brainwashed puppets. And I'm going to prove it. Okay? If you can prove otherwise, any of you, if you can prove otherwise, let's go. I'm ready to go. Let's go to the mat. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this. Uh, this is a serpent seed uh, teaching, and um, from the serpent, it's going to be part one. And I apologize so much that I have to uh, use uh, a computer voice, but my vision is giving me a lot of grief. Uh, I spend way, 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 way too much time on the computer these days. My eyes are giving me trouble and I need some glasses and um, until I can secure those, um, you know, then unfortunately this is how it's got to be. So, you know, please forgive me guys. I, I wouldn't mind reading it to you if I could, but I just can't. All right. So here we go. Hope you enjoy the video. I do look forward to your comments. But like Jonathan said, just you know, just, just be polite, courteous. If you think something's insane, I'm not going to ban you for that. But you start cussing and swearing, you know, I'll ban you for that. But uh, all right, take care. Hope you enjoy. Serpent seed teaching from the serpent, one of the most deceptive doctrines that has slithered into the church, is a serpent seed teaching. First popularized by William Branham and currently held by Arnold Murray of the Sheffers Chapel and his followers that have adjusted some of its meanings. William Branham. But it was a sex act. The serpent was an upright handsome creature. He was, in fact, the missing link that science even in their unspiritual wisdom can see as missing between man and monkey dart. Satan used this creature to get himself into the human race. Was it an apple? Lima. Oh. Bible believers of Lima. We are told that eating a fruit is a sexual sin, adultery on Eve's part with the devil. One would think this departure from scripture would be an obvious scheme of the devil, but for many who are blinded by this teaching it is not. William Branham may not have been the first to preach the serpent seed doctrine, but he has become known as one of the major proponents of this doctrine in our modern times. Now that he is gone Murray holds on to this dishonor. When you look for the in-depth meaning of men as trees, walking, you are able to see that Christ wants us to understand there are plantings of God and plantings of the devil. 
The plantings of that wicked one began in the Garden of Eden with the conception of Cain and followed down through his progeny, the Kenites. Newsletter number 195, January 1995 and number 202, August 1995. Murray teaches these Kenites survived the flood along with Noah, which is a complete departure from what the scripture actually says. So what does that matter? It matters a lot. We will first look at the Bible's teaching of Eve's eating of the fruit before we get to the more serious distortions that are assumed from this unsettling teaching. In Eve's conversation with the devil she responds, Gen. 3. 2-3 We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. First, Eve is aware of their liberty, her and Adam to eat from any of the trees and the prohibition of eating from the one tree. She fully understood its meaning to eat, ingest, but serpent seed advocates change this meaning. Just as the Gnostics and mystics have before them, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. The plain words of the text should be sufficient to explain the meaning of it not being any sexual act, but an act of disobedience to the command of eating from the one tree God put off limits. For if this meant having sexual intercourse then both she and Adam were allowed to have it with the other trees by eating their fruit. The Bible is consistent in its use of words. Tree. Fruit. Eating. These do not have a hidden meaning. Representing something else. Some make this literal event symbolic. When the Bible says it was literal. She saw it was good for food. The trees did have fruit and that is what Eve gave to her husband to eat. Her seeing the fruit. Touching the fruit did not bring death. But eating it. General 3. 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Clearly this is about eating. The Bible makes it clear that fall of man came from the eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge. It had nothing to do with intercourse. These men accuse Eve of being an adulterous woman. Adam and Eve both ate of the fruit of this tree. In fact it says Eve handed the fruit to Adam. Then Adam is an adulterer as well. You can't get a more distorted teaching from scripture unless Satan himself teaches you. Eating of the fruit God instructed from any tree of the garden you may eat freely. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. Genesis 2 16, 17 Notice also what Adam and Eve's sin was when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was a delight to the eyes. And that the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Genesis 3, 6, v. 5 For God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil, the very same desired goal Satan had for himself, to be like God. He wanted Eve to enter into his fallen state. Isa, 14, 12, 14 Satan's five I wills, his fifth I will make myself like the most high. The devil challenges the prohibition. For God knows, your eyes shall be opened. You will be like God. Insinuating God is holding back to keep them from being like him. Satan's appeal was that the knowledge of good and evil is what makes God who he is. If she eats from this tree she too will have this knowledge and it will make her like God. Knowledge is power. The temptation to disobedience came from one who already fell the same way in heaven. Also the same three areas of temptation found in Gen. 3. Six are mentioned for the believer in IJN 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life won. She saw the eye. It was good for food. The fruit was physically appealing. Lust of the flesh too. Delight of the eyes. The lust of the eyes it looked good three. Desirable to make one wise to be like their maker the pride of life. Desire in Hebrew comes from the same Hebrew root to covet. She wanted something that was not hers to have. These are same temptations offered to the second Adam. Jesus, in desert. They were to make him sin and disqualify him from his purpose. M.T. 4. 3-4. General 3. 6-7. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. The Bible is consistent in its use of words. Tree. Fruit. Eating. These do not have a hidden meaning. Representative of something else. What some do is make this literal event symbolic. 
When the Bible says it was literal, she saw it was good for food. The trees did have fruit and that is what Eve gave to her husband to eat. Her seeing the fruit, touching the fruit did not bring death, but eating it, God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. General 3 11, 12. The Lord had nothing to say about a sexual relationship, but about eating a fruit from a tree. If one changes this meaning here they must change it everywhere else, which would cause more confusion. This is a mystical interpretation that is like the Gnostics, to insist that Cain is the offspring of a serpent, Satan. By Eve's eating of a tree, symbolic of her intercourse, when intercourse is described the phrase knew her is used, this is completely missing in describing the sin of Eve, if one turns the eating of a fruit into promiscuity on Eve's part, then what of Adam, God says it is fruit from a tree, then to Adam he said, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Gen 3.17 is referring to Gen 2.16.17 where the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. All the other trees they were already eating from. If eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was intercourse then eating from the other tree was as well. But the Bible says he did not know his wife until after he was out of the garden. The fall and Adam knowing his wife clearly are not the same events. This whole theory is in jeopardy if one reads the word of God carefully, as it is known. The serpent seed doctrine indicates that Adam did not know Eve intimately during the time of their stay in the garden but Satan did. The conception of Cain took place after Adam and Eve were put out of the garden from the fall. Whereas the sin of eating the tree which caused the fall took place in the garden. One has to do some doctrinal gymnastics to try and connect the conception to the encounter with Satan at the tree. This changes the literal descriptions in Genesis to an allegorical, symbolic, in nature. This is a literal event, literal trees, literal fruit and literal people. It is mentioned several times in the New Testament, Rom 5.21, 16.20, 1 Cor, 15.21, 2 Cor, 11, 3-4, 1 Tim 2.14. Much like Darwin's theory of evolution, theorists of this Bible doctrine connect the dots in whatever way they can. Only if these are not interpreted as a literal trees or fruit, can one make seduction by the devil on Eve as the original sin. Then every herb that yields seed or any other tree or fruit cannot be taken literally. God gave the trees fruit as food for man. There is no need to interpret it in an allegorical manner, or find some hidden meaning. The tree was used in a simple test. The tree of knowledge was a representation to impose a restraint on man. It was there to keep him dependent on God. What kind of fruit was it? It does not matter, since the Bible does not make mention of it. This fruit may or may not still exist. What mattered was the consequence of disobeying and eating from the one tree God said not to eat from. Eve is recorded as saying, The serpent deceived, beguiled, me, and I ate. Said you stow T5377 Nasher. A primitive root, to lead astray, that is, mentally, to delude, or, morally, to seduce. The word beguiled they translate as being seduced sexually, that Satan and Eve engaged in an adulterous affair which Cain was born. The question that should be asked is ate what God says the fruit, but these who are also beguiled say God is incorrect. In other words she was seduced from keeping the command to not eat, it means to remove one from the point of origin. God says it was fruit from a tree. Either words mean what they are or one can use their secret knowledge to manipulate and change them. All the other trees they were already eating from. If eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was intercourse then eating from the other tree was as well. They were monogamous. If one was unfaithful Jesus could not refer to their marriage event in MT. 19. 5 is the standard, especially in childbearing. 1 Cor. 6.16. To make Eve a harlot is a demonic teaching. Oh. General 3. 8-21 The woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The Bible says she fell into deception not into adultery. It tells us she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. General 3, 6-7 
the knowledge of evil had affected them both. They both ate and they both had the same fruit and did affect them. It was shared. So if one is going to say Eve eating of a tree was sexual in nature then it needs to be applied to Adam as well. The exactly. problem is that this Hebrew word is consistently used for physically eating not for sex. General 319. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. Gen 9. 4. But you shall not eat flesh with its life. That is, its blood. General 2433. Food was set before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told about my errand. Exod. To 20. So he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. So the whole argument is based on the word deceive is misused. It is really understood as being deceived into disobeying God and eating from the tree. Teachings of the past where do these teachings come from? The Zohar draws upon early mystical texts such as the Sefer Yetzirah and the Bahib, and the early medieval writings of the Hasidic Ashkenaz. The Zohar is a Jewish mystical book that has alternate explanations of the Bible. Much of it is done from a non-biblical interpretation, but a mystical one. The Zohar is to illuminate the deep and secret meanings. The idea that man's soul and spirit is tied into the spiritual realm where our higher level of existence resides. The Zohar, Son Sino translation, in Mariash's 36 B says when they begat children. The firstborn was the son of the serpents, slime. For two beings had intercourse with Eve and she conceived from both and bore two children. Each followed one of the male parents and their spirits parted one to this side and one to the other and similarly their characters. Rabbi David Max Eichhorn traces the idea back through early Jewish Midrashic texts in his book Cain, Son of the Serpent. He identifies rabbis who taught that Cain was the son of the union between the serpent and Eve. Some Kabbalist rabbis in their theory of origins believe that Cain and Abel were from a different genetic makeup than Seth, a theory that God created two Adams, two men. To one he gave a soul and to the other he did not give a soul. The one without a soul is the creature known as the serpent. This theory is even more ancient than what is found in the Kabbalah, one of the Gnostic Gospels. From the 3rd century, the Gospel of Philip states, First, adultery came into being, afterward murder, and he was begotten in adultery, for he was the child of the serpent. So he became a murderer, just like his father, and he killed his brother, indeed. Every act of sexual intercourse which has occurred between those unlike one another is adultery. The Apocryphon of John begins by saying the teaching of the Savior, and the revelation of the mysteries and the things hidden in silence. Even these things which he taught John, his disciple, and to I said to the Savior, Lord, was it not the serpent that taught Adam to eat? The Savior smiled and said, the serpent taught them to eat from wickedness of begetting, lust, and destruction, that he, Adam, might be useful to him. And he, Adam, knew that he was disobedient to him, the chief archon, due to light of the epinoia which is in him, which made him more correct in his thinking than the chief archon, the apocryphon of John, the secret revelation of John, and when she saw, the consequences of, her desire, it changed into a form of a lion-faced serpent, and its eyes were like lightning fires which flash, she cast it away from her, outside that place, that no one of the immortal ones might see it. For she had created it in ignorance. The Secret Book of John. Long Version. Nag Hammadi Library. Codex II. Trans. Frederick Wyss. Jewish Midrash texts from the 9th century and in the Kabbalah both have this concept mentioned. The serpent seed idea appears with 3rd century Gnostics and then in a 9th century book called Perk de Rabbi Eliezer. Who on Genesis 1 CHCI. Zxie identifies the serpent with Samuel who is an archangel in Talmudic writings, accuser, seducer and destroyer, regarded as both good and evil. This serpent seed belief is also held by some adherents of Christian identity. They claim that the Jews are the descendants of Cain, who are also descended from the serpent. The Aryan Nation's website states, we believe that there are literal children of Satan in the world today. These children are the descendants of Cain, who was the result of Eve's original sin. Her physical seduction by Satan, quoted in Christian Identity HTTP, colon slash slash, www.watchman.org, slash profile, slash identity pro, dot htm hash one zero the Aryan Nations website, online, URL HTTP, www.netlink.com Aryan Vic Index e HTML, 
No question that this is an insidious doctrine that can be misused. The further we go into it, the worse it gets. So there you go. I repeat, no question that this is an insidious doctrine that can be misused. The further we go into it, the worse it gets. I'm sorry, guys, but like I said, my eyes are shut. But um, I really hope that this helps you. I will be doing part two here pretty soon. And... Um, I'm just doing my very best. Like I said, personally, I don't really have a problem with Jonathan, but my job is to expose false teaching. And that's what I'm doing. Um, I am a little stunned that he's taken such a strong position, but, uh, you know, I, I think that he's trying to cover up his false teaching. I also question, you know, at this point, uh, this angel or alleged angel that he says appeared to him calling himself Michael um, like someone else mentioned you know why would Michael make him pray a Hail Mary it just doesn't make sense to me so you know beyond that we'll just stick to the teaching here and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I do look forward to your comments just keep it clean keep it polite let's study and reason together okay guys so thank you very much. Take care. If I can do anything for you, please let me know. That's what I'm here for. Bye now. Okay, uh, here are the comments uh, that got me banned and some other people got banned as well. Um, actually, i got to try to work this into the video because I actually forgot to do it. So, but anyway, um, you guys will have to pause the video because um, I'm not going to read all these to you. But uh, the thread actually started um, by saying, What? Are you stacking the deck and removing honest Bible based comments now, Jonathan? I can't even begin to tell you how much this disappoints me, especially considering that I have fought for you and defended you all these years. Thus, it looks like I'm going to be forced to make a video on the subject myself. You have left me no choice. <clears throat> so, um, just scrolling along down here, and, um, you know, here's this fellow here. Says that Jonathan works for the devil. Twin Weather Rivers. I didn't say that, but, uh, you know, I'm starting to wonder, uh, considering everything. Um, he originally said that some of the comments didn't go directly to the field. And uh, why don't you repost whatever you wish to say? So I replied, well, thanks for your reply. Um... And then I suggested that we Skype and uh, just have a good bro to bro conversation. See there, bro to bro, friendly chat, which, you know, he didn't act on, he didn't reply to, anything else. And um, on down in the comments, he said, for the record, no one needs to defend me because I've made reference to, I've been defending him all these years. And, um, so, you know, just scrolling on through here. I hope I'm not going too fast for you, but I don't want to make the video any longer than it has to be. It's already pushing 30 minutes, I think. So, um, you know, I quoted a lot of the same scriptures that, uh, you know, 
the video that I just made quoted. And, you know, just, and I had never seen that other video until tonight. So I was just doing some research and stumbled across it. And I thought, e this, yep, this guy says, yep, he sees it the same way I do, yep, yep, yep. And, um, so I don't know. But, uh, continue with the comments here. I hope you guys that are members of his, uh, group will, you know, see the light and help me wake the guy up, you know? Because, I mean, I'm not saying everything he's, he teaches is wrong. Uh, some of his stuff is truly amazing. I give him kudos for that. But some of his stuff is just from the pit of hell. Eve did not, no way, in shape or form, have sex with Satan. And, um, it's just, it, it, you know, like the video that I just shared with you proves it. But there's going to be several more videos on it, probably. I'm going to, I'm going to stay on top of this and, uh, do my very best to get the truth out and wake my brother up and uh, you know if he doesn't want to be woke up he wants to stay deceived then not much I can do about it he's got free will but if I can pull anybody out of the ditch that's in there with him then that, I will do that that's my job that's what I do so um, I appreciate you guys taking the time you know, to watch my video, and um, hopefully you'll share it. And um, you know, these are th this is tough. This is tough. This is a tough thing. You know, to have to go to these links to try to get the truth out. Here's the only thing that I can think of that I said that might be considered brutal or rude. I said, laughing out loud in an obvious attempt to make your delusional diatribe more palatable. Or palatable. Um, <clears throat> notice I didn't cuss. I didn't swear. I didn't call names. I didn't call anybody stupid. I didn't, I didn't say anything negative like that. You guys read the comments. If I've missed something, you know, and I was rude and brutal, hey, tell me. <clears throat> I'll apologize, but I don't see it, and um, so there it is, guys, so hopefully this will work, and I'll be able to splice this into the video, I'm no video master, but we'll see how it goes, so I love you guys, and thanks for hanging in there and watching the whole thing, if you get to this point, thank you, take care, and if there's anything I can do, please let me know, I'll be glad to help you any way I can, that's what I do. Thank you now. Bye-bye.